Hey guys, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn how to find your net force. By the end of the video, you'll be able to solve F equals MA problems that involve multiple forces. So let's go ahead and get started. So F net um, is gonna bring us back to Newton's second law. And I wanna remind you of the words of Newton's second law. F equals MA, when a force acts on a mass, it causes that mass to accelerate. But, what happens if I'm pulling on a table and you are pulling on the table with the same amount of force in opposite directions? That table's not going to move. So really, what we wanted to talk about is the net force acting on an object. So when a non-zero net force acts on an object, it causes that mass to accelerate. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but the easiest way we can think about F net, or our net force, is it's just the sum of all the forces. So if I push on a table and you push on a table in the same direction, the table's going to move more quickly because we're both, we are both pushing on it. If we're pushing in opposite directions, it'll move slowly because, or it may not even move at all because our forces are balancing each other out. So again, the key here is we want to add up all of our forces. The way we're going to do that is to start by drawing a picture. You can see below, I have a picture here of my blue man and my red man pulling on this wagon with different amounts of force and in opposite directions. So my first step is drawing a picture. And what I like to do is I like to draw arrows representing each of the forces, and I like to label them with their names or their numbers. So here, my force to the left is 150 newtons, and my force to the right is 100 newtons. Then I need to say, okay, which direction is positive? And I'm going to say that the that to the right is positive is the positive direction. So to find F net, I want to add my positive forces and subtract my negative forces. So in this situation, F net is equal to the red the force of the red man pulling to the right which is here 100 newtons and that's positive because it's in our positive direction and from that i'm going to subtract the force applied by the blue man which is as you can see 150 newtons to the left so my net force is going to be negative 50 newtons or 50 newtons to the left. And I did that by adding my forces as vectors instead of scalars. Now, when I have my F net, I can use that to find my mass and acceleration. So for example, if I was told, okay, this block has a mass of 100 kilograms, and I want to know what its acceleration is, Having found my F net, I can do that, right? Because I know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Thus, acceleration is equal to F net over mass. Or, filling this out a little more clearly, plugging in my numbers, my net force, or negative 50 newtons, is equal to my mass, which is 100 kilograms, times my acceleration. Dividing both sides by 100, I get that my acceleration is negative 0.5 meters per second squared, or 0.5 meters per second squared to the left. And that will be one way that I can use F net to figure out my acceleration. So let's go ahead and look at an example problem. Charlie and Bill are both pulling on chairs of mass 30 kilograms. Bill pulls to the left with a force of 5.4 newtons, and Charlie pulls to the right with a force of 3.7 newtons. What will be the acceleration of the chair? So first step here, guys, is going to be to draw a picture. Now, I can represent my chair in a lot of ways, right? I could draw a beautiful picture of a chair, take, take a picture of a chair, all kinds of things. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm not even going to take the, use this picture of a chair that I just drew because it's not that good. I'm actually going to represent my chair as a dot because I find that easier. And if you are someone like me who finds it easier to represent your, your, your images as just dots, you can do that. So we have Bill 
pulling to the left with a force of 5.4 newtons. So I'm going to go ahead and draw his force in first. Next, I'll go ahead and draw in Charlie's force. And Charlie is pulling with a force of 3.7 newtons to the right. And I want to figure out the acceleration of my chair. So let me go ahead and start by writing out. So let me go ahead and start by writing out my givens. So I know that my net force is equal to the sum of all of my in individual forces. I'm going to go ahead and say again that to the right is the po is positive. So my net force is going to be equal to my force pointing to the right, so 3.7, minus my force pointing to the left, or 5.4. Thus, my total force is going to be equal to negative 1.7 newtons. And I'm finding that by following the, F, the, the net force, the process for finding net force. Next, I know that the mass of my chair is 30 kilograms. And having read the question and underlined all the important information, I know that my question is at, problem is asking me to find my acceleration. So I know that the equation that relates force and, acce and acceleration and mass is F net equals mass times acceleration. So now I'm ready to sub and solve. So my F net is negative 1.7 newtons. And again, I found that by taking the sum of the vectors of my two forces. So adding all the right forces, the right direction forces, and subtracting all the left direction for forces. And that negative 1.7 is going to be equal to my mass, which is 30, times my acceleration, which is still, which is my unknown. So now I can go ahead and divide by 30. And when I do so, I will find that my acceleration is negative 0 0.5, 0, excuse me, negative 0 0.057 meters per second squared. And again, that negative sign just means that my, my chair is going to accelerate to the left instead of to the right, which makes sense, right? Because when we look at our forces, we have more force to the left than to the right. So I do want to make a quick note here. Most of the time, rather than having two people pulling on something, you'll have an applied force going in one direction and friction going in the other. So for example, perhaps Bill is pushing the chair to the right with an applied force. And there's going to be a frictional force between the chair and the floor that's going to go in the opposite direction. And the key here, guys, is your friction is always going to oppose the applied force. So if my applied force is to the right, my friction is to the left. If my applied force is to the left, my friction is to the right. So let's look at an example problem. Jack pulls on a magic treehouse with a force of 10.1 newtons. The treehouse accelerates at a rate of 0.1 meters per second squared. If the mass of the treehouse is 63 kilograms, then what is the frictional force? So let's start by drawing our free body diagram. So here's the treehouse, and I have Jack pulling with an applied force of 10.1 newtons. I want to find my frictional force, which I know, and I know my frictional force exists because I'm trying to find it. I also know that by definition, my frictional force is always going to point in the opposite direction of my applied force. So my frictional force must must point to the left. So let's go ahead and start by writing out our givens. So I know that my applied force is 10.1 newtons. I know that my acceleration is 0 0.1 meters per second squared. And I know that the mass of my treehouse is 63 kilograms. And I know that I am trying to find some kind of missing, my missing frictional force. So 
my equation is still going to be the same equation I used in the previous problem. F net equals mass times acceleration. But instead of plugging in my F net and being able to solve, I have to, I have to expand out the left side of my equation. So I know, looking at my picture, that F net is equal to the sum of all of my forces. So that means that my net force is equal to my applied force plus my frictional force which is equal to mass times acceleration. Now you might be saying, Ms. Gosling, why are you adding your frictional force? Looking at the picture, frictional force is in the negative direction, so shouldn't I subtract it? I will tell you, you will see exactly why I am adding instead of subtracting in just a moment. Um, the, short, uh, the, the kind of short answer is, our frictional force is negative, well, the answer we'll get will be negative. So we'll be subtracting something from our applied force. So let's go ahead and finish the problem so you guys can see that. So I need to sub and solve. So my applied force is 10.1 newtons. And I don't need to put the units in, in the problem, right? Plus my frictional force, which I don't know, is going to equal my mass, which is 63 kilograms times my acceleration, which is 0.1. When I simplify this, I get that 10.1 plus my frictional force is equal to 6.3, um, and that's multiplying 63 times 0.1. Next, I will subtract 10.1 from both sides, and what I'll get is that my frictional force is equal to 6.3 minus 10.1, or negative 3.8 newtons. And as you can see here, that negative sign appeared in the problem because my, um, excel my mass and my acceleration was less than what I would get with just my applied force. So when you're solving problems where you are trying to find a missing force, your F net is just going to be the sum of every single force. The negative signs will come in when you get to those parts of the problem. Now, your given forces, for, for known forces, we need to do positive or negative. So if I knew friction and I didn't know my applied force, I would need to give my frictional force a negative sign because it's pointing to the left. But for my unknown forces, I will just add them. So again, I want to write that down. So for known forces, so forces you have a number for, you need to determine if they're positive or negative. For my unknown forces, Forces I'm trying to solve for, just add. And if it's positive or negative, it will come out when you finish the answer or finish the problem. So again, that's going to be our rule for whether we have to worry about direction or not. So let's go ahead and talk takeaways. First, F net is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. And second, we can use Newton's second law to solve problems involving F net. So with that, it is your turn to give this a try on your own. Best of luck and happy solving.